Lab 1, Introduction to Sterile Technique. The focus of this lab is to develop an understanding of sterile or aseptic technique for laboratory work. Proper technique will prevent contamination of the microorganisms used during the lab. Most tools and devices used during the lab are already sterile. Therefore, practicing proper sterile technique will ensure that contamination of your work does not happen. The lab procedure explains sterile technique in detail. The second half of the lab will focus on understanding how two different antibiotics affect the growth of bacteria. Antibiotics inhibit the growth of bacteria, and this lack of growth can be quantified with the use of a spectrophotometer. Throughout the lab, review the lab procedure, consult with the instructor, or watch the instructional videos should something become unclear. Here is a list of materials that you will need for this lab. Sterile water and E. coli suspension, micropipetters and tips, LB agar plates, phosphate buffered saline, microfuge tubes and spectrophotometer cuvettes, glass spreading rod, three Erlenmeyer flasks, ampicillin and chloramphenicol solution, and of course, safety equipment. Obtain three flasks containing 50 milliliters of LB agar from the 37 degrees Celsius water bath and label them as shown. Aseptically pipette three milliliters from the con flask to a cuvette. This is the control. Make sure to practice sterile technique during all transfers. Covering a cuvette with parafilm ensures that spilling will not occur. This is shown here and should be done to every cuvette used. The parafilm can be easily stretched around the edges of the cuvette to make a tight seal. An empty styrofoam cuvette tray is an excellent way to keep the various cuvettes organized. If allowable, writing on the tray can also help with organization. In a similar manner, 3 milliliters of stock E. coli are added to the con flask, effectively inoculating the flask. Swirl the flask to mix the contents. Now, pipette 3 milliliters of the freshly inoculated con flask into another cuvette and cover with parafilm. Using a spectrophotometer, measure the optical density at 550 nanometers of the cuvette. If unfamiliar with the proper use and function of a spectrophotometer, review the video, How to Use a Spectrophotometer. We will now combine 0.5 milliliters from the control flask with 4.5 milliliters of phosphate buffered saline, a tenfold dilution, using the power pipetter. Shown here is the proper way to open and attach the glass pipette to the device. The tip should remain in the wrapper until use to prevent contamination. Transfer 4.5 milliliters of PBS and 0.5 milliliters from the con flask to a sterile test tube as shown here. Place the test tube on ice. Record this instance as time zero and return the flasks to the shaker. At various times, the flasks will have to be removed from the shaker such that 3 milliliters of the cultures can be transferred to a cuvette and parafilm applied such that the OD of the culture be determined using the spectrophotometer. Following the reading, place the cuvettes in the labeled tray. At 40 minutes, remove the three flasks and take OD readings as done previously. Now it is time to inoculate the three flasks seen here with the antibiotics here. Water will be added to the control flask to keep the volume the same. As shown here, one milliliter of ampicillin is aseptically added to the amp flask and one milliliter of chloramphenicol is added to the CM flask. The flasks are swirled to mix and then returned to the shaker. At 100 minutes, serial dilutions are completed for all three flasks, as specified in the lab procedure. If unsure how to complete this, review the video, Serial Dilution. The dilution tubes should all be labeled with the contents and the dilution and kept in an organized fashion, as shown here. 
Once the dilutions are complete, label the 15 LB agar plates as shown in the lab procedure. Make sure to include your initials, the date, the flask name, and the dilution on the label. Do not label the cover of the plate as these can be separated from the bacteria. To plate the dilutions, aseptically remove 0.1 milliliters from the tube using a micropipetter and a sterile tip and add to the associated dish. A sterilized glass rod is used to spread the plated dilution. If unsure how to safely sterilize or spread bacteria, be sure to review the fire safety video. Once the rod is cooled, it can be used to spread the dilution in a circular manner as shown here. Notice how the petri dish cover is held as close as possible to keep contamination to a minimum. This process is repeated for the other plates, at which time all the plates are incubated at 37 degrees C. Following incubation, a light box can be used to count the colonies. By looking through the magnifying glass and using the counter to keep track, the number of colonies on each plate can be recorded.